Hello everybody in YouTube land, this is Michael Zingari and today I got a special treat for y'all. Um, and I am the host of the 28mm Wargaming Sci-Fi channel. Uh, this is going to be a unboxing and lengthy discussion. Uh, one of the focuses of this channel that I'm uh, going to present is presenting games that have different game mechanics that are surprisingly uh, a lot of fun or not the run of the mill uh, set up your force across the, the table and just plow into each other so uh, basically uh, this is a supplement for the game Samurai Battles and if you guys aren't familiar with it it is a game of medieval warfare. Actually, there's two games in it. Uh, there's the Command and Colors, which is a pretty famous game uh, written by Richard Borg. And then uh, there's also the game uh, Art of Tactic, which is written by uh, Constantine Kavenko. I'm pretty sure I screwed up his name. I'll have to ask my wife. My Russian's not that good. But uh, let me uh, start by saying this. It's a big uh, box. Let's try to give you guys an idea. This is actually a supplement for the box. And uh, it usually clocks in around 50 bucks. And I was able to get this for $14.99 from Half Price Books. Now, what, uh, the main battle box that has the two games, I believe you get a 120, 70, uh, two, 170 second scale <clears throat> uh, samurai armies in it. It's enough to play two sides. And this is a supplement for the game. So let's start off by reading the fluff. We'll flip it over here. Okay, and uh, we'll start with the uh, setting paragraph. Body, uh, bodyguards railed their weapons on the side of the wall. The shogun mumbled something in his sleep. Silently, a shadow dropped from the ceiling beam. Landing sound asleep on the floor. The ninja paused for a moment, wondering if he should use this opportunity to decapitate the enemy army but he had not given such he has not been given such an order his mission is was well, already complete besides he can get the shogun next time and the morning will bring a very unpleasant surprise on the battlefield soundless the ninja leapt from the window crept behind the guards and vanished into the maple forest Okay, so that kind of sets the stage, and then uh, I'll read the other part. Nature of Warfare changed forever with Ninja Attack. The first expansion for the unique military history board game, Samurai's Battle. Within this box, lyric, clever ninja. Though not as strong on the battlefield as Samurai, they are indispensable spies, assassins, and saboteurs. Uh, you will use their stealth <clears throat> to undo your enemy's plans. Excuse me. <coughs> Meanwhile, fast and powerful mounted samurai archers can dash across the battlefield, strike down foes from anywhere, while Star Wars samurai foot archers rain uh, death from afar. Why engage the enemy up close when you can attack from a safe distance? Everything you need to add new units for your samurai battles game is included. You can use them with both Art of Tactic and Command of Color. Commands and Colors. Eight scenarios for each system of ways to challenge you. Uh, this is not a complete game. You're going to need a copy of uh, Samurai Battles to use Ninja Attacks. So, uh, basically, um, you get uh, six stands of samurai archers, uh, two stands of ninjas, uh, eight stands of mounted samurais. 
this up with my camera. I hope that's coming out clear. Um, uh, eight stands of mounted samurais and uh, two commanders. So, uh, basically, I'm going to try to hit on some more lights to see if we can get some uh, <clears throat> better lighting for this video. But there's a, a big reason why I decided to do this game and feature this game. And uh, I think I'm going to pick four games every year that I do this channel. And uh, kind of feature them, build them up, do the prep work on... Ah, uh, oh, see, there's something on my lens. Uh, do the prep work on it and basically um, run you through the rules and show you what's special about each game. All right, so in this box, uh, you get 64 uh, medieval Japanese plastic figures, uh, 16 unit cards, set of decals, uh, one set of Shimano flags, and uh, two scenario books. And you also get two uh, Samurai Commander stands, which is one of the harder uh, kits to get. So let's crack this bad boy open. And we'll go all the way through this real quick. All right, let's give you another shot of the box. The art is just absolutely lovely on here. It's pretty awesome. All right, so you get the standard, uh, uh, well, like uh, model thing from Zavetta. Uh, Zavetta is a Russian company. Here's their uh, contact information uh, with a nice hen helicopter on there and a nice tank. So that gives you the information as far as uh, checking them out on the internet. Now let's, uh, let's go through what you get in paper. Let's just grab this out of there. And this right here is a card holder. Probably the only thing that I thought was kind of a waste in the box. And then you see right there that this box is just chock full of miniatures. So uh, let's go through the, what we get as far as paperwork first and then we'll get into all that nice samurai goodness. Alright, one thing I love about this company is look at that. Instructions on how to put this stuff together. Reach one of the type of figures and even how to assemble that box thing. And now the great thing about this game that a lot of people don't know is the guy who actually uh, owns the company wrote the art of tactics. So you know this isn't gonna disappear off the map through a well-established model company. So there's all the nice uh, directions. You get a scenario book for the art of tactic. You get a scenario book for the commands and colors. Okay, and then you get Basically, this is a quick uh, army list for the commanding colors, and that's double-sided. Basically explains the units and how they operate in the game. And you get two uh, copies of that. I'm going to get these suckers laminated. And that's it for the paperwork. Alright. And before we get to the meat of it, uh, let me talk about each game. And uh, why these scenarios are pretty cool. Uh, the army list sheets are really nice. They expand upon the game. Uh, let's talk about the Art of Tactic book first. Uh, Art of Tactic is a pretty cool game. Um, you can do anything from small, you know, two, three unit uh, uh, scenarios to uh, 
but I'd say like a pretty large skirmish warfare. Um, I'll show you how they basically set up the scenario and how the genius of the game. Okay, <clears throat> so basically, uh, it's played out of hex. If you guys can see that. And uh, in the Samurai Battle game, uh, you guys should really watch the review of that. Um, see those darker squares? Those are plastic uh, raised hex. And then there's a river hex. And then uh, the two red stars represent ninja squads. And then uh, the three yellow uh, is a horseman, archers. Uh, and then two... One spear and then one uh, unit of uh, bows. So basically, it gives you a little background, tells you where, what needs to be in what terrain thing, and lets you go. And it's kind of cool. Uh, the <clears throat> missions are called Ninja Strike, Skirmish, Foraging, Assassination. Uh, the River Crossing, Reconnaissance, Escort, Invasion of Iga Province. And then it shows uh, a little bit of advertising on the different units that you can get. Uh, you know, Samurai with Nadashi, uh, Peasants with Ammo Supply, uh, Archer Samurais, Samurai Commanders, Mounted Samurais. Uh, if you need more ninja units, and then it shows the actual box game. Now, <clears throat> this game isn't what I would call super cheap. You do in the base game get, I believe, 120 uh, miniatures. It gives you both the rule sets and all the cards and everything you need to play in counters. And uh, it does run right now for about 200 bucks. Um, for Amazon, uh, you know, I don't like to buy huge battle boxes, so I decided, uh, and it's been a while since I worked with, uh, scale this small, uh, the smallest I ever did was 10 millimeter, and, uh, 172 is going to be a new thing for me. So, uh, you know, basically what I, my deal is thinking is I'm going to, uh, Build everything, get it painted, then I'll buy the base box, and then you know I only need a few units to get set up, and I can start playing uh, 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 adventures and stuff like that. Just too many board games uh, turn into side projects, and I just don't want that to happen with this because this has a uh, such a unique mechanic to it. Uh, the Samurai Battles is what one what I call maybe one of the ultimate crossover games. Uh, it's intricate enough to please those guys that uh, back in the day they used to play the old war game chit games like uh, Avalon Hill and S I think it's SSI used to make. It's got that intricacy. Uh, yeah, it's simple enough to bring in a board uh, board game player. I'm no insult to guys who play board games, but there's uh, typically the board games made for the lowest common denominator, and it's not uh, that intricate. Now, granted, there are some nice ones. Uh, you know, if you enjoy Axis and Allies, and then they had uh, Shogun, which I wish I could get a copy of. Uh, I think uh, I lost that in a move or uh no actually that was an ex-girlfriend that put that in garage sale and sold it without my permission which i'm still pissed about uh but yeah if you're a fan of those games <clears throat> you're gonna dig this this should appeal to the average war gamer should appeal to the historical person and it uh should appeal to uh The only thing, only people I don't think it'll appeal to is the card people. You know, if you're just strictly magic player, you might want to stay away from this. All right. All right, to the second scenario book. Uh, 
Col Commanding Colors is basically more of a, a massive battle type uh, war game. You can do historical uh, historical missions with it and reenact battles and stuff like that. This is a bunch of uh, reenactments. Um, the one thing is uh, the ninja, when you use the ninja here, you don't necessarily use the uh, uh, <clears throat> stands. You basically will take like four guys and they represent four guys. So uh, it's more for, uh, it's basically, it's more of a game for uh, for doing large battles and then the art tactics is more for intricate missions and stuff like that. So. Let's uh, go over the names and scenarios. Uh, Rita Castle, 1517 uh, is the date. Uh, phase 2, Mayauchi River. Uh, Koryama Castle, 1540. River in Kua. I'm going to slaughter this Japanese. but uh. Alright, so basically these are all historic battles, or parts of them. So there's plenty of fun there. Out of the two games, uh, Command of Colors is probably the easier one to learn. So um, let me let's talk about their tactic. That's the part that excites me. All right. So basically, what is so great about the our tactic is you use these cards to uh, dry erase cards. Each one of those symbols is a command that you can order your troops to do. And uh, I don't really want to open these up. You're gonna have to look at someone else's thing because I don't want to. I want to make sure I got the um, things to uh, cover them up, the little sleeves. But basically, with the dry erase board, you mark what each unit's gonna do, and then you go through the turn, and you don't let your player, your other player, know what's going on. And he marked his stuff at the same time. So as you cycle through the turn, you read what happens with the card, and then you interact with it. Okay? So that's pretty cool. So it's like blind movement, and you also do your defense. So everything's programmed per round, and it's very strategic, very intricate, and I absolutely love it. Okay? So that's the game dynamic that's pretty awesome. Now with the uh, uh, Command of Colors, they added uh, Ninja, no, they added, uh, I think they're called Dragon Cards, and basically, um, there's a lot of little special abilities that are on the card that make it kind of tooth and nail, and uh, with the Command and Color uh, Dice, if you guys have ever played any of the other games, uh, certain dice will trigger, certain rolls on the dice will trigger reactions. You got honor points to buy off the reactions. And certain uh, true types have special abilities. So that's a really cool, intricate game. Also, So uh, when we get into doing battle reports and I show everybody how to play this because uh, like Frostgrave, um, I'm going to say uh, we're at 2018, and from 2010 to 2018, Samurai Battles should have been one of the highlights of, uh, of the gaming world, you know what I'm saying? Super great game, if you're not playing it, you don't know what you're missing, and it's got really unique game mechanics, so, you know, game designer people, you really pay attention to this uh, I know it might not be everybody's cup of tea but uh, I think there's just great uh, possibilities to give challenges that I just haven't had on the table in a long time uh, you know with those cardboard chip games the, a lot of the intricacies in there are in this game so there's a lot of dynamics without being burdened with uh, tons of tables and rules. They really 
uh, design it efficiently. And, uh, you know, when you guys see it played, you're going to be amazed. All right, so you get the card set. Um, in this bag, there's uh, flags and, uh, for back banners and tokens for honor points and decals. All right, uh, I'm going to pull out one sprue of each, but let's uh, get these sorted out. So the ones with the star right here are ninja sprues. So that's my ninja sprue. Ones with the fancy signs right there is the command sprue. Okay, here's your horse archer sprue. So I can set this guy aside. You get uh, two sprues of horse archers. Make that three bags, four bags of ho horse archers. These guys right here are your normal archers. So that's one of the ones we'll show. You get two sprues, three sprues like that. So you get a lot of troop and you get a lot of variety. So why don't we start with the namesake of the uh, bag. Let's do the ninjas. Okay. Set these right here. Excuse me, I gotta rip into these and basically gotta, uh, bite them open with my teeth real quick. Not so prepared today. Okay, in each bag you'll get four sprues and there'll be two different ones. All right, so this sprue right here, let's get this set a little bit. This sprue right here is your sprue for, these are used for uh, the Art of Tactic game. And then uh, there'll be the pieces. Here's the bases for the guys. Here's the guys. It's the back of them. These are ninjas. The arms are down here. Be careful. Uh, when you do throw these in, put these arms in, they're going to stay in there like a snap type model. So take that into consideration. And these right here are honor tokens. Okay. And that's part of the mechanic for Art of Tactics. So that's the base. And here's your uh, identity base. This token right here is for uh, this flag right here is for our tactics. This flag right here is for the leader for that unit uh, for the commanded colors. All right, you got your slotted base, your base is right there. That's what the guys look like. So that makes up those two sprues and uh, I know some guys get scared when they see uh, um, 172 guys and how small they are uh, basically you know if you can paint dwarves or uh, 15 mil you can paint these guys and uh, it's not that bad the models are usually really well made and uh, it does take some use to get getting used to but it's not as bad as like six mil it's about the same as painting 15 mil guys all right let's do uh, an archery sprue this is the samurais with the long bows and you see those arrows right there? Basically, there's little notches in there, and that's how you keep track of how much ammunition you have. And there's also guys in the, the game, that uh, peasants that can refuel your ammo. So you got to be strategic about that. Here's some more samurai guys. Some bases, and there's your command flags, and there's the arrows. Real nice guys. Uh, you can put the back banners on and the whole nine yards. It's pretty cool. You know, if you're doing a samurai army, there's a lot of pageantry 
to those guys. So you definitely want to uh, put the little back uh, banners on them. You know, it's essential to the flavor. <clears throat> All right, let's do... Uh, now let's see the command screw for last. All right, let's do the horse archers. So basically, you get two different sprues, and you get two of them in each little pouch. They got an X number of guys on here. Okay. So, uh, here is your, uh, Archery sprue. There's the different weapons and stuff. And the horses are in two pieces. Real nice clean molds. There's your uh, bases for your horses and stuff. There's an, uh, another horse and a guy. There's all your arrows, your command tokens, your bases, etc., etc. Everything you need to play the game. <clears throat> now the <clears throat> nice thing if you want to expand the game is you like put some Koreans against these dudes You can use these symbols <clears throat> and still do the game ah, Excuse me All right, so that's the horse archery yeah, I Always keep something in the frame because uh, Amazon oh, uh, not Amazon the uh, YouTube always picks the worst damn frame to show for whatever the title of my video is, so. Let's open these bad boys up. Alright, here's the command sprue. You got infantry and horse command. So, uh, here's your infantry commanders. So you get three of those guys. There's your horse commander. There's one guy in there. That's uh, identical to the same brew. So you get two of those. And then three more of these. So uh, basically that's what uh, the contents of the box looks like. Now let's talk about the, uh, the awesomeness of this whole deal. All right, the base set does cost 200 bucks, and I know you're going, oh my God, that's a lot. You get 120 guys with the base box. This is just an expansion. This is like 64 guys, so you get half as much. You get the rule books, the scenario books, uh, the quick start sheets, the trains, the maps, the dice, everything you need to play, okay? Now, the reason why I picked this is because I want to have some kind of historical uh, representation. Uh, I don't really enjoy World War II anymore because I've done it to death. Uh, basically, here's the great secret. If you do what the Vic winning army did in that battle, guess what? Good chance, unless you got bad dice skills or bad dice luck, you're going to win that battle, if it's simulated correctly. Uh, if you use Russian tactics to win Russian battles, you're going to win Russian battles. If you use German tactics to win German battles, you're going to win that battle. So, Samurai warfare is something I've not studied at all. I never really had that much interest in Japanese uh, uh, culture. But my wife is uh, Mongolian. And I found out that uh, twice Mongolia tried to invade Japan and twice cyclones happened and uh, sunk the ships of the Mongols. So what we're going to do is a bunch of what if, you know, after you get the base rules down, we're going to expand this game out. We're going to do a bunch of what if scenarios. What would happen if the Mongols actually landed? Uh, I think out of all the armies of that time, Japan was probably the one most likely to be able to uh, repel it. So, there's all those scenarios and stuff that we can run. Um, so, that's going to be a world of fun. Also, 
I always liked uh, Bell's uh, Five Rings or Legends of the Five Rings. I like the fluff behind that. So this is a good base for that. Uh, you know, we can buy Chinese figures, Korean figures, uh, and there's a real, it's real cheap to get an army. I mean, 30, 40 bucks, you got what you need. So we're going to run Undead and Orcs and Evil Humans and play them against Samurai and Chinese and kind of do the Legend of the Five Rings kind of world. Uh, steal a lot from that fluff. And then um, basically we're going to draw a nice world map where, uh, you know, there's the wall. We're going to bring dwarves into it from the mountains. And uh, have the Russians and some of the Chinese soldiers uh, work for the side of darkness. And uh, maybe even have like uh, an Arabic army or an Indian army. So it's just a huge amount of potential. So uh, with a good rule system, you should be able to write homebrew rules and bring in different things. And, uh, you know, for God's sakes... Always uh, kind of expand upon it. So there's a lot of room for replayability in the game. Both of the games have really great dynamics. You guys should uh, not only just watch my video. Because uh, I haven't played them yet. I've just watched different videos and read some books and reviews and stuff like that. But I think this is something that I can uh, probably play for about five years and keep expanding and growing uh it might be a game i want to keep around for the rest of my life and that's my goal because i'm sick of uh the, whatever the new hotness is most of the time it fizzles out it's not that great of a game but throughout the years when you think about it the stuff all pretty much really started in the 70s so we're coming on almost 50 years of gaming and out of that 50 years of gaming, there's probably a dozen games that still stand the test of time. Uh, not so much that they're around, but they're worth playing. Uh, some of them are still around. Like uh, for Mech Battle, for a long time, uh, Battletech was where it was at, you know. Uh, I actually found a game that I think is better, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But I want to play those games that I think will st uh, stand the test of time. Ones where if you get uh, another person to sit down and play them, explain it to them, well, they get hooked. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, this Samurai Battles game, I'm going to get the, the starter, not so much starter set, but this uh, scenario... <clears throat> all done and figured out and um get it painted and then i'll buy the main battle game it'll probably be around june around my birthday it's 200 bucks so i'll uh, set a little money aside for that and uh show you guys how to do everything in the game uh, right now we'll just talk about uh the whole dynamics and stuff like that now one thing just from experience working with small guys like this you want to get a serrated uh, blade for your X-Acto knife to actually cut these out. I wouldn't trim these out with uh, normal clippers when you're doing fine detailed stuff like that. Uh, Tamara makes a, a hobby saw. I think it's uh, number two. It's the one that I use. So basically you're going to get a lot better luck with that. The hard plastic kits. Uh, I use the, the testers liquid uh, glue that's on a brush to do this stuff. Uh, it works better for me than a squeeze bottle. Sometimes I squeeze the squeeze bottle a little too much even though it's got the little needle stem on there. So that's uh, one of the building things. But um, just uh, I know this is the 28 millimeter uh sci-fi war game but uh i like to help all people and with this i'll be able to satisfy the historical and fantasy crowd 
And uh, to me, it's going to be interesting because it's all brand new. I don't know about uh, Jap Japan's history or its battles. Um, and then the whole uh, what if alternative uh, aspect of what if the Mongols invaded Japan. I think, uh, you know, Mongols ruled most of the earth at one time, a bigger empire than anybody's had. And uh, I think uh, that's the, if any army was going to stand in their way, Japan's army would be the one to do it. So I think that's going to be pretty damn interesting. Uh, mixing a fantasy element and doing uh, uh, the Five Rings or series to it or, you know, having a dead. I think that's going to bring a whole nother angle to it. Um, there's just a lot of replayability for these games and a lot of uh, room for expansion. And uh, it also, you know, after your initial box is done, I don't think it'll be like Warhammer 40k where I'll look at it and see, oh, I've got $2,000 worth of stuff and oh, one third of it's obsolete. <clears throat> Another 10, 20 percent, they don't have rules for it anymore. And then the rest I can play with. Uh, with this game, I don't think that's going to happen. And I always love the opportunity of uh, expanding things and doing home rules and homebrewed rules. And uh, I like the intric intricacy of having um, where you just issue out your offense and defensive orders to your guys, set the cards down as done secretly, and then when you go through the, the different rounds and you do the fight, each guy flips over his card and your troops have got to do what it's got to do. Tactically, I think that's uh, pretty brilliant. And I haven't done anything like that in a long time. So uh, this is basically just the, the start. This is going to be a game we're going to stick with for a while. I, I, and I hope uh, it gets some interest sparked in it. If you didn't play this game, I really think you're missing out on something special. And uh, hope you guys follow this series. Uh, once I, right now I'm kind of feeling my way around uh, what I want to do for the channel. But after a while, there'll be established days where um, I'll talk about certain subjects. Kind of that way it's actually it has a show aspect to it, like a TV show. All right, everybody. I want to thank you all for watching. Um, I don't do Patreon or anything for this uh, type of video. If you like what I'm doing, what I would ask of you, if you'd like to donate figures, if you got unloved, unused, unwanted, unpainted, painted, just stuff that you just can't see, using again, and you want to give it a good home, send it here. Uh, we'll use it here on the show. We're also going to take it to our, uh, we got a youth center kind of community center type of thing. And I'm going to, uh, basically I teach uh, tweeners, young teenagers. Uh, well, not just young ones. I got a kid at 17 that likes to play too. But basically we do it at the community center and I'm trying to get these kids to quit playing video games and see where the real action is. And that's on the tabletop. Uh, it's not just that it's all in all better rules and better uh, mechanics. You get to uh, socialize with people face to face. So that's a great thing. Uh, it's problem solving, interactions with people, social engagements. I think it's good for our kids to do and uh, we don't do that like we used to because uh, for God's sakes if it wasn't for the adults that were in my life when I was a young kid because I started back playing D&D &D when uh, crap what edition was it? The basic edition with the red box, chain mail, and we had the white uh, ones too. So I think that's the very first, but I'm not sure. But mid 80s kids, mid 80s, early to mid 80s. And uh, it was the adults in my life that introduced it, uncles, aunts, and uh, 
dad and, you know, I lived in Rockford, Illinois. At that time, Rockford, Illinois was a killer gaming place and uh, played all kinds of stuff. All right, so, uh, but enough of me meandering about that. So basically, if you got those uh, minis that you don't want, you want to donate them to the channel, just get in, get a hold of me and uh, I'll feature you on the channel. We'll paint up the stuff, get it ready to go. I'll give you credit on it. And uh, thank you all and because uh, you're good people that want to help. That's awesome. So uh, thanks. And then... Um, We'll get those uh, things down to the kid and start developing some uh, people and develop character and keep this hobby alive. All right, so uh, if you guys uh, have any experience with samurai battles, uh, please let them uh, in there. I think it's uh, they're wonderful channels. Look at other people's YouTube channels. I'll get a list of uh, different videos and stuff like that to talk about the next uh, time around. And uh, we'll get cracking on these. All right, so I've been going off at the mouth for a long time now. Let's, uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, please like and subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. Subscribe and share. May the dice be with you.